So we're gonna celebrate this Canada Day with this Canadian Canadian pretend. No, that's not a typo. For those who live in Canada, they know that they've seen a Canadian fill in the blank dish a lot of times. Online ordering, restaurants, usually a combination of bacon and mushrooms constitutes a Canadian pizza, for example. So let's give our Canadian pretend a nice twist of mushrooms and bacon. Let's get started. Now when it comes to the potato, I'm using this Yukon Gold potato. It's rather large and it's gonna help give us some nice amount of curls. To make the actual curls, what you need is a spiralizer. Now there's no way to really make curly fries without a spiralizer. And if you do get one, they're pretty cheap, depending on how big of a spiralizer it is. You can use it for all kinds of veggies so it won't be just a one trick kind of pony. So wash the potatoes first, then we cut one side so we have a flat side, just like this. Put the potato flat side towards the spokes and then just press against it, make that initial cut, just start rotating. Like maybe you're just gonna go around for a week or so just paralyzing everything. It's just so much fun to do. Now you can see that the spirals are actually working really well so that this is not like even separate. It's all this one big kind of spiral. So for me, that's what I wanted. I wanted just fun with fries. And if you really want to like have shorter spirals, then just make sure to just use a knife and cut after every one or two revolutions of your spiralizing. It just depends on what you're looking for with your curly fries. Now these guys go straight into a bowl. Now we're gonna fill this up with cold water to get any excess starch out of this. And to save time, I actually have a nice bowl full of these fries already soaking in water. All the starch has been taken out so we can drain this water and then pat these fries dry. So these aren't gonna be super long, so I'm gonna cut these based on what I want. Let's pull it out break it at the lengths that you desire. You can make them as small as you want. You can do this step earlier on while you're spiralizing. Now you are also gonna end up with these stragglers right here, where it's not a spiral, but it's just like the end pieces. And you can actually clump them together and make bunched up cold fries with that. So all of these, just pat them dry lightly. And now we make a classic batter with some flour, some black pepper, and salt, and add some cayenne pepper for some color, a bit of onion powder as well, and the same amount for the garlic powder as well. Give this all a good whisk, then start adding in water a bit at a time, the consistency of pancakes. So nice and thick, but smooth as well. Take a look at this. So here are a baking sheet with parchment, our batter, and now you wanna start dredging your potato, your coli fry in this batter. It's almost like making pakoras. It's Indian style fritters, very similar, except it's not made with flour and it's made with chickpea flour. So that makes it gluten-free. So you can use that to make this recipe if you want it to be gluten-free. I'll link that below so you can check that out. And then just like that, coat the rest of the potatoes with the batter and then cover this with plastic wrap while we prepare the next stage. This recipe will be part of the fun fries collab going on. So if you need any inspiration to push yourself, whether it's creativity, whether it's to just push yourself to try something new, check out the free live to cook guide down below. Okay, we'll start by cooking up our bacon. Now I roll it up and freeze it in individual portions just like this so that they don't oxidize as they stay in the fridge and always have a cold pan and then turn on the heat because that's the only way to render all of that fat in a nice calm manner to really get that beautiful crisp bacon. So we'll get this bacon sorted out and my oil here is waiting to be used. Aim for a temperature of around 375F to 400 Fahrenheit and always, always do a test fry before you do the actual batch just so that you have the chance to see 
how your food is going to turn out before you ruin it. And while the bacon is getting prepared, let's make our gravy as well. So add about two tablespoons of butter, let that melt. Then I have a handful of mushrooms that I've roughly chopped. Coat that well with that butter and we'll wait until the mushrooms have started to release some of that water. A pinch of salt here goes a long way. That butter is really doing our mushrooms good. They've turned nice and shiny just like that and is smelling incredible. Season this with a tiny bit of pepper and in the meanwhile our frozen bacon portions are starting to unravel. So let them do what they want to do by helping them unravel. When you start doing this to portion out extra bacon from the package, you're gonna appreciate how convenient this really is. Okay, let's go back to our mushrooms. Now I did try to research on why it's called a Canadian pizza, let's say, when bacon and mushrooms are incorporated. Maybe it's the Canadian bacon, but if there's somebody in the comment section who knows that, I would really love to know. So let's get back to our mushrooms, add in a tablespoon of flour. Then we'll give that a nice mix and we'll lightly roast that flour. And when you can start to smell that the roux is getting nutty, it's smelling fragrant, start adding in your broth. And now add in a few splashes of Worcestershire sauce and simmer this until it has reduced by half. We'll thicken it later on with some cornstarch. I would avoid seasoning the actual gravy with salt and pepper at this stage because there's already some amount of salt in the stock and as it reduces the flavors will be more concentrated and depending on the type of broth that you are using you don't know how much sodium actually is in there until you actually taste it and once you're happy with your bacon take it out pat it dry and chop it up now this step is completely optional but a bit of this bouillon paste will really add a ton of flavor because you don't have to spend hours upon hours reducing some great quality broth to get an intense amount of flavor. And if you can find it, add it in. And that's why we didn't season the gravy yet because this already has lots of salt. And that shine, that's thanks to the butter. That's what helps add that sheen to our sauce. And talking about shine, the bacon is looking incredible. Let's take a look at that. Now this is the exciting part. Everything is almost ready and we have to synchronize to get everything ready, hot and ready. Bacon, nice and crispy. Our gravy, only thing left is tasting and adjusting for seasoning and adding a bit of cornstarch slurry to thicken that up. Our curly fries, or if you're using regular fries, are already soaked up, patted dry. All that's left to do is fry them up. So let's take a look at our fry station. We have our oil, some canola oil heating over here. And of course, all of our fries. And something you have to keep in mind is you leave some space over the top so that when you add stuff in it, the oil has space in your pot or your wok to rise. You do not want the oil to bubble over. That's gonna be a huge fire hazard. So please fry safely. Start adding in your fries right in there. And just give it a quick shake just to make sure nothing is stuck on the bottom of your wok. Just look at how great they are looking already. Now because of the spiral shape, there's way more negative space in the middle. There's no potato, right? It's just more volume. So you have to make smaller batches when you do your fry up. I guess that's the only disadvantage of spiral fries but everything else is just makes it so much more fun than regular fries. And arguably the best thing is there's no need to do two sessions of frying. You just do one fry and you are done because that batter is what's helping to get that beautiful crispiness on our fries. Now, I'm quite happy with how these look. Now, of course you can make your fries more golden brown, more crispy, just do you. And then we'll proceed with our next batch. All right, so when you've reached a stage 
when you're on your last batch of fries, then prepare your cornstarch slurry. All you need is a teaspoon of cornstarch and a tiny bit of water. Then just mix this up until it has completely dissolved. Now for this beautiful mushroom gravy, turn the heat back on, add in your cornstarch slurry and just mix that well. How cornstarch works with a gravy like this is the moment that gravy is gonna start to bubble, it's gonna start to thicken instantly. So let's, in the meanwhile, prepare our serving bowl. So my fries are ready. They're not salted. One layer of fries, then sprinkle in some cheese curds. And as you can see here, that gravy is looking amazing. I did tell you in the beginning, the bit of salt we put for the mushrooms, that's gonna go a long way, and it did, because the broth and the paste, the bouillon paste we added, lots of flavor there. About a cup of your gravy, right on those beautiful fries, on those cheese curds. Then we'll repeat that layering in the same order, starting with the fries, then some more cheese curds, and then the gravy. That kind of helps pack the heat in and makes those cheese curds start to turn soft and squeaky when you eat it. And don't you dare forget about those beautiful bacon bits. Pop that right on there. As much or as little as you want. Listen, this is amazing. There's nothing to complain here. Bacon, curly fries, delicious mushroom gravy. And putin is great. You want the traditional putin? Check that out downstairs in the description box. Traditional recipe on my website. You want fusion? I got that for you too. And I want all of you to make your favorite type of putin, your favorite versions of putin, and tag Fun Fries. Be part of the collab. You can put as many entries as you want throughout the month of July. This July is all about fries, and I want to see what you have in store. And as I said, the whole putin playlist will be linked here as well. And the entire putin playlist for everything putin will be linked here as well. Check that out and I'll see you on the next one. Bye guys.